no man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. Hallelujah. I want to thank God so much for a man of God who has uh, believed in me and raised me, loved me, and made me the kind of man that I have become. Those, of, uh, those people who had the privilege to see us before, we were not looking any good before we met the man of God. We were in bad shape. Yet, even in those days, the people used to call us heroes. But we are the ones who know how much our man of God has done in us. And not only so, he has given me the opportunity today to share the word of God with us. And I cannot take that lightly. Thank you so much, Papa. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So today, I want us to share by the grace of God a subject that I've titled The Dominion of Seed Over Time. The Dominion of Seed Over Time. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible talks of seed time and harvest in the book of Genesis. It says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. And mark the words when he says, while the earth remains. While the earth, in other words, as long as there is the earth. But one of them goes past even the earth remaining. It's called seed time. The Bible says, our Father normally tells us that the parable is that the seed is the word of God. And according to the Bible, this word of God lives and abides forever. So for it, it is not subject to the earth remaining. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. As for winter and summer, they shall cease with the earth. Night and day will cease. The Bible says time is coming where Jesus will only be our light. There will be no night anymore. Hallelujah. Now, Peter spoke about us being born again, and he says, we are born again, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Say, I am born of that which lives and abides forever. I live forever. Do you believe it? I live forever. Just it lives and abides. I'm born of that which lives. We live. We don't die. We live. Paul one day said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall not all sleep. To the born again believer, death is sleep. God is trying to show you how easy it is. Where, where he has put death. Because if you sleep, you don't need to, 
to be raised from sleep. You can wake up. Uh, hallelujah. It is sleep. And it's also revealing how easy it is to raise someone from the dead. The way you would wake up a sleeping person. Say, Chibichindi, wake up. Because they are sleeping. Death has been reduced to sleep. Oh, hallelujah. It says we shall not all sleep, which means some will die. The time we are entering, if you are to die, die early. Because time is coming whereby we are just going to continue living. It says in him we live. It didn't say in him we die. In him we live. Move. Move meaning we are not stuck, we move. We live and move. And then he says, we have our being. You can't take away our being. We have our being. We possess our being. You can't kill me. I have my being. And what is your being? You are not a human being. Hello? The gospel is called good news. Good what? News. To tell you are a human being is not news. The good news is you are no longer a human being. The Bible says, the Bible says being born again. Being, being, being born again. So you are a born again being. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say I'm a born again being. So the being has changed. If any man be in Christ, any man, any man, if any man be in Christ, he is, is, is. It has happened. Tell me, it has happened. He is a new, not a new human being. A new creature. This is a creature. It's not a human being. It's a creature. And it says, it is born again of the incorruptible seed. Now, the first man, Adam, was corruptible. That is why he was corrupted. Because he was corruptible. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He was corruptible. That's why God told him, the day you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. Which means he could die. Okay? He could die. The fact that he could die meant he was corruptible. And why could he die? so that he might become redeemable. Because you cannot die for a man who can't die. So for Jesus to come to die for him, he had to be dieable. Is that, is that such a word? <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Which word is that? He had to be mortal. Yeah. Mortal. He was a mortal man. Subject to, he could die. And so, in the garden, if you remember, there were two trees in the middle. Some people say it was one, there were two. One was the tree of life, and then the other was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Which means evil existed before Adam. Because it was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That was before Adam sinned. There was evil before. For him to talk about them dying means there was death before. Adam just didn't ask questions of what is evil. They would have told him. 
Adam was a quiet man. Even when the snake was talking, he was just quiet. Left the wife to, con- to converse. It. And normally it's women who talk to snakes. Hey. Do you know how snakes talk? So, and that's how they call ladies. Hey. The next time you hear, that's a snake. <laughs> Praise God. Adam allowed this to continue. That's why we are calling you for men gather to teach you to speak a word in the right time. Oh, hallelujah. That day we will hear things. So the first man was corruptible. So the first man was not God's plan. God's plan was the last man, Jesus Christ, who is God, the last Adam, who is the incorruptible seed. The Bible says that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the parable is that the seed is the Word. So in the beginning was the seed. The seed was with God. For God to have been with the seed, it means he was envisioning a harvest. The seed of God is the will of God. The will of God is the plan of God. So that seed was God's plan. Because God's dream from the beginning was to multiply himself. That was his dream, to multiply himself. And so he knew to be able to multiply himself, he has to be a seed. And if he is a seed, because the Bible says, the word was God, so the seed was God. This God to multiply had to be planted. So the grave was part of the plan. The grave was part of the plan. So God was with his seed. The word was with God. The word was with God. The word loves fellowship with God. It was enjoying fellowship with God. But there was a future. The future of this seed was that it was going to be planted. And planting is burial. Planting is burial. So the seed was coming to be buried. Hallelujah. So, the second Adam, who is Jesus, was incorruptible. He was incorruptible. He was the real plan. Adam was not the real plan. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He was not the real. The real plan was Jesus Christ. And so, when you read verses like, I know the plans that I I have for you, says the Lord. The greatest plan God has ever had for humanity was Jesus Christ. Because when you read that verse, many people think he's talking about houses, those are the plans God has for you. Houses and nice clothes. Those are in the ultimate seed, ultimate plan, ultimate will of God, Jesus Christ. When God gave his son, he gave everything. So you owe God nothing. If you have received Jesus Christ, you have received everything. Shout hallelujah. So this seed had to be born in time. Now, the the discussion of redemption was not not, uh, discussed in time. It was discussed out of time. Before the foundations of the world. But says he was the lamb that was slain. Praise God. Adam was a seed. That is why he had the ability to multiply himself. And so to God, God knows only two men. He knows Adam and Christ. He only knows two two men. 
So you are either in Adam or in Christ. And the Bible says, in Adam all die. In Adam all die. Why do we talk about redemption? Because Adam sold us. We had to be bought back. The word redemption means to buy. Adam entered the fake deal. He was conned. Actually, the Bible says Adam was not deceived. It was the woman that was deceived. And then you see Adam said, well, I love you. Uh, since you have died, I will die with you. Adam said, I love you so much, I will die with you. And he ate the thing. He said, bring. Oh, I love you so much, I will die with you. Jesus, when he came, said, I love you so much, I will die for you. Uh, hey, hallelujah. He didn't just want to die with us. He said, I'm going to die in your place. That's greater love. Clap for Jesus Christ. So the discussion of burying this seed was held in timelessness. And so in the plan of God, this seed had to come into time. And so for a season, this seed was subjected to time. And so in the old covenant, seed was subject to time. So it mattered when you planted your seed. If you planted it in the wrong season, the wrong time, it would affect the seed. It would corrupt the seed. And then therefore affect the harvest. But God allowed it to be so. He got his seed and he hid it in time. So it was subject to time, but for a season. The Bible says, this is the mystery. This is the mystery that was hid in ages past. That mystery says, is Christ in you. Says, to whom God would make known what is the riches, what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is, that mystery is Christ Alabasata Christ in you. Christ, which means the seed has arrived. Christ in you. This Christ is the seed. So this seed in you is the hope of glory. That means you can dream of a glorious life. Why? Because Christ is in you. Say, Christ is in me. I can only have a glorious life. Christ in me is the hope of my glory. Oh, hallelujah. So this Christ was the seed that was hidden. It says this was the mystery that was hidden in ages. Ages, that is time. So God hid his seed in time. Why did the seed come into time? It had come to redeem those who were under time. To redeem them out of time. So that when you plant whatever you plant, time does not affect it. The word of God came and took over the time realm when Jesus Christ was planted and he rose from the dead. Bible says he went and occupied the highest place, far above all principality and power. He went past the time dimension and owned all dimensions. And so time is subject to the seed. That's why I love the other scripture where it talks about seed time. He calls it seed time. So the time is of the seed. Not time seed, but seed time. So the time belongs, it was prophetic. Time belongs to the seed. And when you begin to have fellowship with this seed, listen, this seed is also time. 
Hello? Seed time can also be read word time. Because the seed is the word. We don't joke with word time. That's why our father always emphasizes coming on timing for the word. There's something about the word of God and time. Seed time. So the word of God is time. You see, in the old covenant, God defined time differently for the Jews. That's why we talk about the Jewish calendar. God didn't want them to look at time the same way. There's a scripture where he tells them that for them, this would be the beginning of years for you. He told them this will be the beginning of years for you. Give me that scripture. He defined their time differently. He didn't want them to see time the way the world sees time. So for us, the word of God is what defines our time. When the word of God comes, if I didn't know when to move, when the word comes, I know this is now the time. Oh, hallelujah. If God has not spoken, I know you want to marry me, but if God has not spoken, it's not yet time. It's not yet time. It's not yet time. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he was born into time. And for a season, was subject to time. But he later, because of the resurrection, defeated time. That's why on the cross, the sun could not shine when he died. Why? He was changing the times. And so when Joshua stopped the sun, he wasn't changing the times. For him, when he came, the sun said, how can I shine when my master has dropped dead? He had given up his life. So the sun, it was dark. And it became dark at exactly midday. Because that is the very hour where time is calculated. So he was changing every chronos. But him as the word, he was Kairos. Oh, hallelujah. You know, our father taught us, he has a, there's a very beautiful teaching on, on, on Kairos and Kronos. How many have watched that message? How many were there that day? You were there? Yeah, you need to look for that message. It's rich. Very rich. The word of God is time. So with the word of God, you are always on time. No one should shake say, oh, you are getting late, you're not getting late. No. If God has, say, has not said it's late, it's not late. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So this word that is time, it is Kairos. Now, I want to just share with us a, a, a brief uh, explanation about Kairos and Kronos. Your Kronos is the normal time. It's 1 a.m. It's 1 p.m. It's 2 a.m. 2 p.m. That is Kronos. Kairos is a moment in Kronos. But it is a moment of opportunity which is timed. Okay? It's a moment of opportunity which is timed. And so because it is timed, you can't afford to waste it. Because it is timed. The way the, uh, you have football matches, when they ring when they just bring it up, when they blow that whistle, I'm not a football match. I'm not a football match. I'm not a, <laughs> hey, you can't even see the things that I'm not a football fan. It's also true. I'm not a football match. <laughs> we don't match with football. Okay. I praise God. Okay. So, when they blow that whistle for the match to begin, it's Kairos. It's Kairos. It's Kairos. And it has come to redeem because Kairos is a redeemer. And we all know who the redeemer is. Jesus Christ. So, Jesus is the Kairos. So, the moment 
you have with Jesus. That's your Kairos moment. So when they blow the whistle, it doesn't matter how many times you have kicked this ball. You have been kicking this ball in Kronos. When they blow the whistle, it's no time to play your games of Kronos. It's time to define your time. This one match can redeem all your years. So you can't afford to waste this moment. It's a Kairos moment. Why? It is timed. Is it 90 minutes or 60 minutes? With bowlers. It's what? 90. So you have to do whatever you have to do in the 90. Because the, that 90 is your Kairos moment. Now, if the match is beginning at 1, that 1 is different from the 1 you were practicing. So you can't practice on the playground. So you, on the pitch, your coach will say, ha, you finish first half. <laughs> finish first half. <laughs> they replace you in your Kairos moment. You can't joke with Kairos. And I've seen some people who waste Kairos moments. Because that moment, according to heavenly uh, timing, is supposed to last for a few hours of Kronos. And it has come to redeem whichever years you have lost, whichever time you have lost. It doesn't matter how hard you fail or how, how bad you failed. Kairos has come to redeem all that. The Bible says, I will restore to you the lost years. The years that the canker worm ate. The only one who has power to redeem that kind of time. Because you see, God cannot bring back 1990. But he can bring back the opportunity that you missed in 1990. <laughs> Do you understand? And so, I was sharing in the first service that when a man has so fellowshiped with Kairos, the word of God, the seed of God, when a man so fellowships with it, he comes to a place where he also becomes Kairos. There are men who themselves have become Kairos. Such that when you meet them, what you do with that meeting either finishes you or it promotes you. If you're not ready to meet greatness, don't go there. Let people normally disturb us. Like, Pastor Masi, you are the one close to Apostle. Connect me. To do what? Hey. There are men who have become Kairos. For example, if you have time with the president of the nation, that time you are having with that man is a Kairos moment of a kind. And there are people who have stories of meeting great men. Every time you, you, know, you meet them, they say, do uh, so, you know so-and-so? Yeah, I was with him last week. Hey, hey. The other one, we ate dinner together. So that, this time they meet the president, and all they get from that meeting is a selfie. Say, so, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, I want to show the villagers that I'm not as small as they think. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the first service, we discovered that that thing you have just taken, that thing you call selfie, is a self finished. That this self is finished. How do you take it? <laughs> you are gone. There are people who want to meet the man of God just so they can add him on the list of other great men they have seen. Apostle Christ, that one I saw him. I know him. Eh? There are men whose stories changed the moment they had two seconds with the man. Just two seconds. And that's why when you have a privilege of meeting the man of God, when you reach there, 
It's not your time to talk. You have spoken all your life. That mouth has not changed anything about you. Now even here you want to talk. Now, you and the man of God, who is having a Kairos moment? Eh? It is your own Kairos. And you want to go deeper. Yes, you will go deeper, but as you go deeper, you get lost in the depth. I've actually had people who, who get stuck in the, in the mines. They keep going deeper until they get stuck. <laughs> no, that time, let one word from him. Some of us fear to, listen, you, you think we always, are always with our man of God. Pastor Bazas. Even me to enter there, I have to first prepare for the Kairos. Eh? If I dare meet him and I was not prepared, I said, I'm finished. God, mercy. I asked my pockets, uh, how are we standing? And the pockets said, you are finished. What? <laughs> Praise God. And so Kairos moments, these are moments that God has put for you. So when you meet people who God has blessed, the Bible says, without contradiction. Without contradiction. It says, the less. That is Hebrews 7, 7. It says, and without all contradiction, the less is blessed. Now, this less has come to be blessed, but is the one talking. It's a contradiction. It says the less is blessed. So the less has to be taught how to be with the greater. Because there was a woman who comes and collects healing from a hem. A hem. Jesus stands and says, who touched me? Now Peter's legs were already tired. He says, Sir, all of us have touched you. <laughs> Let's move. <laughs> all of us, it's all of us. Just says, no, 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 no. Somebody has touched me. Say, so, okay, if someone has touched you, they, they have touched you. Let's go. What a woman was able to collect from a thread. There are people who are giving him a hug and get remaining sick. How can Jesus hug you and you go away the same? Yet, there's a woman who just, she stole power. She just came and, uh, and went away. They had to call her back. Madam, <laughs> come and give your testimony. Hey! Someone near here had whooping cough. And she, he was touching Jesus. Nothing happened. This one collected it from a thread. Sometimes we are too used to men of God. When you meet your pastors, that's a, that's a moment. That's a moment. Now, the pastor could even be busy doing his own things. But you, you know what you want. Because Jesus was moving. He was not looking for a woman to heal. He was going somewhere. This woman saw Kairos moving. Said, "Ah, yaba sakabaya." Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we have to leave that place of honor. Hallelujah. Now, when he says that, I will restore to you the years that the canker worm ate. It says, he says, and first give us verse twenty-three. It says, be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice. Be glad, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Rain for what? Rain for your seed. And it says, and the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. Next verse. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. So in the realm of the spirit, years, time is food. 
That's why some of you are eating your time. It's food. It's food. And for it to be food, it means it is seed. Jesus was Kairos. There's a man, if you remember, the man who was sick for 38 years. He had missed his Kairos moments for 38 years. And then Kairos came. The main Kairos, Jesus Christ. And told him, do you want to get well? And then he found him arguing in Kairos. Oh, I have no one to help me. Pastor Zach told us, he was saying, I have no one to help me. Yet the, the one to help was there. Help had come. Praise the Jesus Christ. So this seed is called the incorruptible seed. And it says you are born of that incorruptible seed, which conquered time. Say, I conquered time in Christ Jesus. This seed is incorruptible, and it's what gave birth to you. The first man was made. God says, let us make man. Let's make man. So the first man was made. But this last man was born. The last man was born. That is why we tell people, you must be born again. Not made again. Every man that was made by God needs to be born of God. Praise God. So now we are born again, but born of the incorruptible seed. Now you are incorruptible. You are incorruptible. Say, I am incorruptible. Are you incorruptible? Peter said, we have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lusts. Say, I have escaped the corruption that is in the world. I cannot be corrupted. Now say it with boldness. I cannot be corrupted. I cannot be affected. You are the one who affects. You're not affected. Praise God. That's why when people are coughing around, you don't, have, don't be afraid. Qua, qua. You're like, peace, 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 peace. <laughs> you are healed. You know, some of you are okay until someone greets you. And after greeting you, I says, hey, but these days I've been uh, having a hard time with flu. You're like, flu. And as soon as you hear that, you begin to hear some things itching in the chair. <laughs> And, you are, and that's, that's the question you have. You're wondering, if I am incorruptible, why am I struggling with disease? Why am I struggling with poverty if I am incorruptible? The reason you're going through what you're going through is because you are incorruptible. Eh? Oh, I'm having a hard time in marriage. Yes, because you are incorruptible. This disease has refused to go. Yes, you are incorruptible. I can hear someone start saying, yeah. relax. How do you know that a watch is waterproof? Uh, how do you know? You do what? You put it in water. Uh huh. That's why you are in water. Hey. Because this seed must be proved. If it is incorruptible, it has to be proved. You are in the world, but you are not of the world. So as a watch, every time you see water, you were indoctrinated. You were indoctrinated that watches die in water. So every time you see water, Relax. God is saying you are incorruptible. You are waterproof. You are not like other watches. You, I made you differently. When I was making you, the thing that dies, I didn't put it there. Hey! When I was fashioning you, that thing that fails, I didn't include it. You are incorruptible. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why sometimes God is not moved by your, your crying. 
mukama mukama is like what mukama what water and now the bible says angels they want to look into these things every time they see you worried they say but he, i thought we saw incorruptible incorruptible <laughs> they open the bible they say, eh. i thought he was born of incorruptible they want to look into these matters they say, eh. hallelujah Okay, but you say we are incorruptible. You know, this seed, this seed, the Bible says, the one who's born of God cannot sin. Sin is in the time zone. Kairos invaded Kronos and redeemed you from that zone where they sin. The Bible says, whoever, listen, 1 John 3, 9, I didn't write it. 1 John 3, 9 is John who wrote it. He says, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remains in him. Say, God's seed. Say, say, God's seed remains in me. Which means the God DNA remains. And so we cannot sin. But then there are questions. Okay, Musumba. Pastor. Why am I struggling with sin? Why am I struggling with sickness? I've tried to rebuke this thing. The thing rebukes me back. And then you tell us that we are incorruptible. Yes, you are incorruptible. But you have watered the wrong seeds. When the devil told you you are a thief, you watered it. Now you have become professional. Phones are not safe near you. So today, repent, repent, repent. Shake your hand like this. I, today, we're not taking anything. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Put the, relax. That's why we normally warn you in service. Keep your belongings properly. Because some people who are born again, the others who are bound again. <laughs> so, keep your property properly. <laughs> Hallelujah. You watered the wrong seed. You watered the wrong seed. So whatever the devil calls you, you water that one. You water the message you receive from this altar. When you hear that you are incorruptible, water that one. Nourish that. Let that one be the one to grow. Now, the word of God is incorruptible, but the Bible says there are those who corrupt it. Interestingly, it says the, the, the word is incorruptible, but there are those who corrupt it. This, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17, it says, we are not as many which corrupt the word. So how can that which is incorruptible be corrupted? It is corrupted in the soulish realm. In the soul, in the place of thoughts and thinking and emotions. That's why it's corrupted in. But then, it's not corrupted as, as the word, but it is the eyes that see it that gets corrupted. The ears that hear it. If you see double images, if you have a, an issue of seeing double images, it is not because the images are two. Okay? So yes, you are seeing something corrupted, but it is not because it is corrupted in itself, but your seeing, your eyes were corrupted. So you see it in a corrupted way. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, those ones corrupt the word because of how they interpret it. But the Bible says, grow in grace. Grow in grace. For you to grow in grace means you are planted in grace. And which means you are a seed. You are also a seed. Say, I'm a seed. Say, I'm an incorruptible seed. So you need to be planted in grace. That's why we have the privilege of our ministry being a ministry of grace. So now that we have found a ministry like this one, you allow to be planted. You submit to this soil and let this soil nurture you. Nurture this incorruptible seed and have, make you have incorruptible fruit. That's why when you begin a business, it is incorruptible business. If, if you enter a marriage, it is an incorruptible marriage. Because the Bible says, whatsoever is born of God. Ah, uh, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Hallelujah. Say, I am incorruptible. 
Glory to God. Our time is fast spent. Let's stand up on our feet. Yes, 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 yes. That is why we have so much honor for seed time. Word time. We have so much honor for the word of God. And sometimes as the man of God is preaching, you see some of us standing up. Huh? That standing is giving the word of God a standing ovation. And saluting the word. Man Talabai. One of those days, I stood up. Papa had said something. I stood up. A man behind me told me, uh, I want to see Apostle Grace. I said, hey. <laughs> I had to see it. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why, let me show you something as we, as we finish. Psalms chapter 126 verse 6. He says, He that goes forth and weepeth, bearing bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing bringing his harvest with him he's saying if you can grab this thing yes things have gone wrong you are weeping the marriage is frustrating you are weeping the business has refused you are weeping the contract didn't go through you are weeping but you bear precious seed in other words, this seed has become precious to you. There are people who have the word of God, but it is not precious to them. This is precious word. It says, shall doubtless. The seed brings you into a doubtless zone. Doubtless. Doubtless. You shall doubtless come back. Doubtless. When you, those billions you are talking about always, doubtless will come to pass. Doubtless. That's why it says, be not deceived. That which you sow. Because the realm of seed is a place where you don't, you're not deceived. You can't be deceived. Seed does not deceive. It is the truth. And so when you get a hold, Peter calls it a more sure word of God. When you have it, you enter the zone of doubtless. Doubtless. Hallelujah. Speak in other tongues and glorify God. What are these seeds? What are this seed? Monta rabashata karabadele basan. Ronto roboshata karabadele le basan. Monde rebasata karabashota rabadele le basan. Bi barason de barakazata la labadele le basan. Monde rebashata karabadele le basan. Monde rikabason da rabadele le basan. Monta rabasata la bay. I am incorruptible. I am incorruptible. No weapon fashioned against me can prosper. Because I'm fashioned differently. I'm fashioned differently. I have conquered the time realm with the word of God. I'm redeeming time that I lost. The opportunities I lost. With the word of God, I gain all of it back. In the name of Jesus. Ronde kabazora la bashanda la baya. Liga rabaya de bo sonda giba sata la badele baya. Roshada la badele kabasonda baya. Thank you, blessed God. Thank you, blessed God. Thank you, blessed God. Give God a mighty hand clap. There are people here, you have lost a lot of time. And you have given up. You said, well, it passed. I don't think I can get it again. It's never too late with God. God is bringing you into a place. 
is creating for you a moment. You will find yourself in a meeting. You will hear words. You receive an opportunity bigger than the ones you have lost before. These are things that God does. These are things that God does. That one moment, I saw somebody, God bring you into a meeting to redeem the years you have lost. You'll have a testimony. Shout hallelujah. Now, if you're here and you have never received Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, you need to be born again. Come, I want to pray with you that you may receive Jesus into your heart and begin a new season and a new time. Please come. For God so loved the world. So love, oh God, hey. so love the world that He gave, that he gave His, his only Son, Son who so ever believes will not perish, they shall have eternal. You know, that's what it means. To have eternal life means you are born into the timeless zone. Hallelujah. I was born into the timeless zone. Time has no dominion over me. Praise God. That's why in Uganda there's this thing, uh, they normally read news that Bamukubye uh, Amasasi Agamuje Mubude. To mean they have shot him bullets that have removed him out of time. Because time functions only here. Praise God. So those of you who have come, say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today, I've heard your word. I've believed it. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that when you died, it was me you died for. When you were buried, it was for me. When you were raised, it was for my glory. Today, I confess you as my Lord. From today, disease is not my Lord. Sin is not my Lord. The things of this world are not my Lord. You are my Lord. I'm born again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are born again. Congratulations. You're going to give us just a short time. You go with these men and women of God. We take your names and contacts if you have that we can follow you up and pray with you and share with you what it means to be born again. Praise God. God richly bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, as I was preaching, there was too much light. This side, too much light. Our mother is in the house. <laughs> Praise God. It's an honor, Mama. Glory to God. 
Yes, yes. We have the best parents in the whole world. Yeah. This broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at fenero.org. Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Fenero, make manifest.